Right, finding limits. Let's get into it. Uh, so, uh, the first thing that we see when we look at this is that there are two types of questions. Can you see what they are? The key difference here is that some of these x's are heading towards infinity, while others are heading towards different numbers. Okay, so we're going to treat those two differently. In fact, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go through uh, the ones that are um, heading to infinity first. So let's look at question one. Okay, question one. Um, what we need to do here is we need to think about which is the highest power of x. Okay, because what's going to happen is that's going to overpower the other ones. As x gets bigger and bigger and bigger, the other bits are going to matter less and less and less. Just that highest power of x is going to count. So if we have a look here, the highest power of x is x to the 2, which occurs twice. Right? So we don't even worry about the rest of that. Okay, we cross it out. Forget about it. Okay, and so we're left with 8x squared over 11x squared. Now the thing is, x squared is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and it's becoming more and more important. But it's the same thing on the top and the bottom. So once we've forgotten about the rest of that fraction, we can um, then cancel the x squareds out, right? Okay, and what's going to happen is that we're just going to be left with the coefficient on that biggest power of x. Now, when you're doing this in the exam, feel free to just go right in and write the answer. Uh, so here the answer would be 8 over 11. Okay. Going on to number 3. Um, number 2, obviously, x is heading to 5. We're going to treat that differently. Um, when we look at number 3 there, um, our highest power of x is x cubed. Yeah, highest power of x. The x squared is just like the 11, going to get swamped in the enormousness of x cubed as x cubed gets, just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So what we're going to end up with is a much bigger bottom than we have top. Okay, if the bottom's much bigger, what's happening? It's getting smaller, right? It's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Will it ever go negative? No. So therefore, it must be heading towards that smallest of the positive numbers, zero, right? All good. Right, um, we're not going to do number five, but we can do number four. Again, what are we looking for? We're looking for the highest power of x. Okay, and again, this one's on the top and on the bottom. Okay, top and bottom. Right, okay, so um, everything else is just going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. So we're just going to be left with x squared over x squared. Even though those are very big numbers, they still cancel when they're both on the top and the bottom. So therefore, we're going to end up with 1. Excellent work. Now let's let, have a look at some graphs. Uh, so this was the first one we said was heading towards being 8 over 11. Uh, even though 2 is not particularly close uh, to infinity, you can see that it's already heading well into some set value there, which is about here, about, oh yeah, 8 over 11 maybe. Fair enough, I could accept that. Right, let's go. Uh, having a look at this one here, what did we say? Well, we had a much bigger number on the bottom, and therefore uh, we said that it was heading towards zero. Uh, it's not very close to zero yet, but it's heading that way. So yeah, I'll take that one. Okay, how about this one here? Whoa, this is doing some crazy stuff. It starts off here at about 3, then shoots down to about negative 3, and then it starts coming back up, and well, it is going over 0 there. Let's have a look. We said that this one, because it was, you know, there was an x squared on the top and an x squared on the bottom, it was going to head towards 1. Okay, well, you can't really see that there, but we're only up to 19. Remember, this is, what's it heading towards as it goes to infinity? So let's take another graph, okay, we're just going to squeeze it, okay, same graph, just squeezed in a bit, and as we get up to 55, you can see it's heading up, when it gets to this line, that's one, well, it's going to take a long time to get there, but we do have until infinity, so yeah, I can accept that, excellent, right, now these ones take a little bit more time, 
not really hard if you remember what to do. And here's what you do. Right, first off, let's just check that top and bottom are equal to zero. Okay, because otherwise we can just substitute straight in and that would be our answer. Okay, but in all the ones you, you get, you're going to get zero over zero, zero divided by zero, the can't do. Right, so let's just see. Uh, when we put when we put 5 in there, we're going to have 25 minus 5 times 5 is 25. We're going to get 0 on the top. 25 minus 5 minus 20 is 0. Okay, so we've got 0 over 0. Now the cool thing here is that the factor theorem tells you that that has a factor of x minus 5, right, on the top and on the bottom which means you could cancel. So we could factorize, cancel, then it should no longer be equal to zero on both the top and the bottom. Uh, it should be equal to something else and we should be able to solve it and there'll be no problem because remember the only problem is the division by zero. So let's have a look. Factorize the top or we can take an x out of the, both of them. That's going to give us x, x minus five on the top and on the bottom, we're going to have oh, x minus 5 and x plus 4. Do you agree? Okay. Let's have a look. Right. Now, so first step, factorize. Second step, cancel. So I'm going to cancel that. I'm going to cancel that. I'm going to have x, uh, x over x plus 4. Right? Good. Next, we're going to want... To substitute in, so factorize, cancel, substitute. Factorize, cancel, substitute. Easy. Right, so we're going to put in 5 on the top and 5 plus 4 on the bottom, and that's going to give us 5 over 9, and that's an answer. That's fine. Now notice where I put the limit statements. You must do the same. Until you substitute, keep putting lim x approaches 5 on. Please, I want to give you full marks, yeah? Okay, looking at this one. Now remember, we only need to use this um, fancy technique if the top and the bottom are approaching 0, right? So let's have a quick look here. If we put uh, 1 in there, then we'd have 1 minus 6 plus 5, 0. 1 squared is 1 minus 1 is 0. So it is, a, right, everyone on the test is going to do that. But let's just check, okay, because if we, otherwise we could just substitute straight away, everybody would be happy. But if we did that, we'd have 0, 0, we'd, we wouldn't get an answer, it would be bad, nobody would be happy. Right, let's have a look here. We want to factorize that, so we could do difference of two squares on the bottom. That's going to be x plus 1, x minus 1. And on the top, we're going to have x plus 5, x minus 1. No. Oh, well, I got it right when I did the slideshow. Isn't that good? Right. So we're going to take the minus x minus 1 on the top and the x minus 1 on the bottom. Cross them out. And because we're factorizing, canceling, and then substituting, right? So we canceled, substitute, so yeah, right, and then minus 4 over 2, so that would give me minus 2. Okay, well, I hope you learned something, and I hope you do well in the test, and thanks for watching. Okay.